Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our C++ software and design pattern series. Now in this lesson, I'm going to be talking about one of the most requested videos, which is on the observer pattern. But this is going to be a series of videos because we need to see how we sort of build things up. So I'm going to give you a really naive implementation today so we can see just how the observer pattern works because I think that'll demystify the general idea and then we'll add a little bit more power as we go. But with that said, if you're not familiar with the observer pattern, let's just go ahead and try to put it into context. And at the end of this video, we'll build a really simple implementation. And then you'll want to think about things like ownership, lifetime of some of these objects and how they're registered or what events they actually respond to. And again, I think hopefully you'll have at least the knowledge to go forward, read some articles about the observer to, uh, pattern, or otherwise see the follow on videos that will come after this. So again, here's just a first look at the observer. I hope you enjoy. And with that said, let's go ahead and start. So I want to go ahead and just start with a little bit of an exercise here. And this is what I want you to kind of think about uh, as far as let's not even worry about the design pattern, but let's just look at a problem that we want to try to solve. So here's a little game here, uh, Angry Birds, which I think maybe some of you have still played here. And I want you to think about when this character here is being thrown, what types of events do you actually see happening? Or maybe what state is going on? What subsystems might be interacting here if you were to build this type of game? And you don't need game programming experience, but what you need to know is that there is some event happening and some response. So go ahead and take a moment to pause the video and think about that. And if you went ahead and paused the video and thought about it, you know, here's the sort of stuff that I see here. I see physics, I see maybe a score system that needs to be activated. There are sounds, animations, maybe there's logging files, maybe there's additional game state that's keeping track of the progress that you made in the game. There's a lot going on, and that's sort of the point here. And a lot of these events are reactionary or triggered based off of some object of interest here. Uh, this subject here, which we'll call the bird here. And that's sort of the idea that we're getting into with the observer pattern. Now, is this the perfect pattern for this game when it comes to optimization? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but the point is there is some action happening with this object here and some response. So we want to design some system that can work here uh, to simulate that. So with that said, here's what we've sort of seen here. And when it comes to the actual code for this, you might have, again, in a naive implementation, some sort of bird slingshot here where you're firing off the bird and then you do some physics and then you sort of check if there's a collision, then you play a sound and then you sort of check which objects were actually hit and how to update the score. So again, I want you to just take a moment to look at this. And again, I'll leave the picture here so you can think about this. On Pause the video and you know let me know if you see anything that's wrong with this code. Would this be code that you'd want to maintain or look at a year later? And if you pause the video and again thought about this, well, the answer is, you know, chances are no. <laughs> you know, there's deep nesting here, you know, with the different if statements and so on that you might have, again, even in this small example. And you might even notice how coupled this code is, meaning that I have the physics system, the collision system, the sound system. Again, imagine being a programmer on a large team having to know about sound, physics, graphics, and you know, have some expertise in each of those domains. So that's a little bit tricky for us to manage here. So with that in mind, you know, we want to use some design pattern to help us fix the system here. And again, there's a list of design patterns. They're not perfect, but they're usually templates that might help us at least approach a problem. And then if it doesn't fix the solution, you can tweak it or maybe come up with something else uh, on your own or with your team. But in this particular case, I want us to be looking at behavioral design patterns. That's what the observer pattern falls under. And most of these patterns have to do with this idea of how do we communicate between objects? So when that bird hits some object, what's the communication? Is that communicating with the collision system, the sound system, et cetera? There's gonna be multiple objects that are interacting. So that's the idea here. So let's go ahead and look at the observer. Now, just to go ahead and give the name to it or the definition to the name observer pattern, we state the observer pattern is a software design pattern in which an object named the subject, maintains a list of its dependents called observers. And it notifies them automatically of any state changes, usually by calling one of their methods. So again, this idea of, I have this bird, it's flying through our window, uh, it's the subject, it's the interesting thing, right, that the player is controlling in the instance of a game, and then it hits some other object and it needs to notify the system something interesting happened, and then have some reaction. Okay, so you can imagine that's the sort of idea here. 
So again, just thinking about our simple example, um, you know, an even simpler example here uh, that I have at the top here in the terms of a graphical user interface, I have this button called click me and maybe it changes a color or some event happens. And this pattern here for the observer pattern is often used in model view controller. So if you've ever experienced this or maybe done some graphical user interface, then maybe you're quite familiar with the observer pattern and you just want to watch this video to see how it's done in C++ or at least a way to approach it. But that's the idea with the observer pattern. So let's just go ahead and code up at this point a sort of naive or first implementation of the observer pattern so you can see it's not all that scary with how it's actually uh, done, or at least a naive implementation. And the basic idea is, again, we have this subject, something that's interesting, and a bunch of observers that are going to be monitoring for this subject to notify them and say, hey, I did something interesting, now respond, whether that means call a, you know, member function or do something else interesting here. So again, the way we want to start thinking about this or a way we can approach this, and again, it doesn't have to be object oriented, but I'm just going to go ahead and uh, show you an object oriented implementation. Think of it as having two classes, a subject, the thing of interest, maybe the main character in a video game and the observer. So these are the objects we want to react based on the uh, subject. So this is sort of a typical use case, again, where you have this sort of one uh, subject of interest and many observers watching it. Again, think of it like a Hollywood celebrity if you like. Uh, that's sort of how the system is set up. All right, so again, uh, just a little bit of a note here on the observer pattern. Sometimes you'll see the terminology if you're looking for other uh, supplements here that we usually have a subject. Again, that's the thing that's of interest. And then the observer, the things that are going to uh, wait to be notified when something interesting happens. Subject sometimes is also known as the publisher or the observable thing. So sometimes you'll see that an observer, sometimes you'll see as subscriber. So again, just the different terminology. Uh, I'll often see publisher subscriber. So just keep that in mind. But I'm going to be using subject and observer. All right. So here's sort of what our implementation is going to look like. I'll give you the sketch and then we're actually going to code it out together so that we know everything that's going on. And I'll go ahead and move out of the screen here for a moment, but we're going to have a subject here. And again, this is just a really naive implementation here of just getting this to work so we understand uh, subject and observer in the observer pattern. Uh, but the idea is, again, we'll have a subject, we'll be able to add some observers, uh, I'm just going to be using a raw pointer, but of course you could use uh, maybe some other smart pointer class if you'd like. And then we'll have the ability to remove observers and then notify once the subject has done something interesting, all of our observers. So at a minimum, we need to collect all of our observers in some collection, and you'll have to decide what that data structure is. I'm just going to use a list here, but you might use a vector or maybe some other more intelligent data structure, depending on how complicated notify gets. But that's it. Have a collection of your observers. You can add and remove from that collection and then notify them again when something interesting happens. Now, as for our observer, well, here's an example implementation here where maybe we'll give our observer a name just so we can identify them. And then when we are notified of something that's interesting happen, well, here's sort of our reaction. Here's the function that's called here. Okay, and we might even want to pass other things like events so we know what to do and we're notified that something interesting happened. But for now, we're just going to print out hello. Simple enough, and we could write this in you know 50 or so lines of code. So here's the basic idea again, where we're going to have one subject that's interesting, and we're going to sort of register these observers into our subject here. And then every time our subject, again, this is our main character in a game, for example, does something interesting, it can notify, and then all of our observers will be notified that, hey, something interesting happened, or here was an event that was of interest. All right. So with that said, here will be our main, where we'll create a subject, several observers, register each of those observers to our subject, notify them, and then we can uh, just you know print out a line, remove an observer, and then notify, and you'll see we have one less observer uh, that is called here. Okay, so that's going to be the basic use case here. That's what we'll code up here. And let's go ahead and look at our first implementation. So I'll go ahead and pop back in here. Let's go ahead and dive into the code here. And let's create a main.cpp file. Again, I'm just going to do this in one file here. Uh, and this is just going to be our first try. Again, uh, this won't be the perfect try, but it'll be something that gets us up and running. 
So I'm going to need to include some libraries here, like a string here. Let's go ahead and include IO stream for input output. And I'm going to use a forward list, which is available in C++11, just so that we have some container structure. Again, you could use a vector if you want, but forward list works well enough. And now let's go ahead and create our main, our entry point into the program. And let's just go ahead and uh, set this up here. And now let's go ahead and create our observer uh, class here. So again, the class for our observer, and we'll go ahead and set this up here. Um, well, I'll go ahead and make it a class here. We could make it a struct, but um, we'll go ahead and set this up here. I've got my observer and our observers. I'm just going to give them a name so that we have some sort of unique way to identify them. Now I'm going to go ahead and use uh, a initializer here uh, to initialize uh, our values here, sort of optimize things. Uh, and then that makes our constructor relatively um, uh, trivial to set up here. And let's make sure that we give each of our observers uh, a name. Again, I'm going to use mname here. Uh, let's make that data private. Again, just trying to uh, have some good um, code practices here. And then what our observer is going to do uh, when they're notified, they're just going to print out, uh, you know, mname uh, says hello or something like that. Okay. Uh, and I'll just put an end line here. And that's our observer. Okay, so I've written enough code here. Let's go ahead and make sure this compiles. Uh, I'd recommend using dash G or W all to get any warnings here. Uh, we're compiling our main file. Uh, I'm going to make a brief mistake here just to show you again that we need C++11. Um, so make sure that uh, we have that here. It uh, looks like I made another mistake here where I'm uh, missing a uh, semicolon. Uh, so let me go ahead and just uh, fix that up. Uh, and let me be explicit about using uh, C++ um, 11 at least. I like using 20 on this series. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. And uh, let's go ahead and fix this quotation here. Okay, so we should be good to go there. Go ahead and show you in one line what we're using to uh, compile. Uh, just this line here. And so far, so good. Okay, so that's our observer. Uh, now let's go ahead and create our subject here. So I'll go ahead, uh, let's go ahead and uh, set this up here. And for our subject, what we're going to need to do here is, again, this is the thing that contains uh, observers. Okay, so, you know, let me go ahead back here. Uh, you know, we can look at our subject if you want, but again, that's this thing. So it needs a collection of our observers. I'll move out of the way here and the ability to add or remove observers. Now, again, you could, you know, add or remove whatever functionality you want as complicated as you make this, but again, you know, add, remove, I'd say at a minimum, and then be able to notify, or maybe I would name this even better later on, notify all, if we're notifying all of our observers, or maybe just some of them, uh, you'll see that in various APIs, but let's just go ahead, um, uh, and proceed here with our implementation. So what I'll go ahead and do, let's go ahead and um, create some member functions. I'm not even going to create a uh, constructor. We don't need it quite yet. Uh, so we'll add our observer. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm just going to add a, a pointer to our observer. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, do that. I'll just call this observer. And we'll go ahead and uh, push this into our collection. Now let's go ahead and uh, create our collection actually before I complete this. Um, now, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, we do want to think about the actual ownership. You know, does our subject own all these observers? Why are we passing this raw pointer? So again, there are some design decisions we have to make here. Uh, maybe I'll uh, correct those in a later uh, video as we talk about it. But for now, let's just get our collection here. Uh, forward uh, list of observers. And let's just call this M observers. There we are. And we'll push into our observers to the front of our list. Um, and again, you know, even the order that we're pushing things in might matter or affect our system. But again, uh, just something to keep in mind. Uh, let's go ahead and have a function for removing our observers. Uh, this will make for the nice uh, demo here. Uh, so again, in observer. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Observer. All right. And M observers. Um, we have a nice remove function here. That's a nice uh, advantage of using the forward list. Uh, we can do that. 
Uh, and then now the sort of uh, important or perhaps interesting parts here uh, where I call on, uh, I'm just going to call this notify all. I will actually change this since that's what we're doing here. Uh, I'm just going to say for all of our observers here, uh, let's just go ahead and uh, call their notify uh, function here. Okay, so that'll just be O and uh, notify. Uh, and let's see what we call this here if I scroll up. So I just want to call for each of my observers on notify. Okay, so that's essentially what I'm going to be doing here on notify. And that's it. Okay, let's go ahead and give this a compile, see if I made any uh, silly mistakes. Uh, looks like at least one. Uh, no uh, return statement. Oh, I need to mark uh, my line 21 here. Let's make this a void function. Let's give this another try. And good to go. Okay, so there's our subject here. And again, just for uh, review, let's just go ahead and split this window so you can see our uh, observer on the left side and our subject on the right side. Again, subject, we have the container that stores everything and we can add and remove our observers. Um, and let me just uh, fix a little uh, spelling mistake here. So we've got to remove observer. Let's make sure that we get our API. Good, okay. And then observers just call their on notify. That's their sort of action for these objects. Okay, uh, so that's uh, our code so far. Now let's go ahead and write our main function here. Uh, so go ahead and uh, set this up here. Uh, so we'll need to create a subject. Uh, I'll just call it subject. Create some observers. Observer one. And let's give them a, a name here. Um, you know, you can be as creative as you want. I'm just going to call it observer hyphen one. <laughs> and let's go ahead and uh, that way I can uh, increment these uh, whoop, or decrement them, I guess. There we are. Um, and then what I need to do for my subject is then add each of these observers. So observer uh, one and observer two and observer three. Okay, so let's go ahead and repeat that code here two and three. There we are. And then let's go ahead and just test this out with our subject dot uh, notify. And I call this notify all here. Okay. So let's go ahead and give this a run here and see how it works. See if I made any uh, silly compilers. Uh, whoops. Just a couple more again. Um, classic running through this. Well, what are we passing into our uh, observer? Well, these are uh, pointers, right? So we need to pass in addresses. Let's go ahead and set that up. And it looks like it's up and running. And let's go ahead and run this program. And when we notify, we see observer three, two, and one say hello. And again, you can tell because we are uh, now, why are they, uh, you know, why is observer three being notified first? Well, you know, it happens to be that we're pushing to the front of our list here. So again, where I mentioned previously, it does sort of matter um, sometimes what data structure you use, or if you're pushing to the front or the back or these types of things, you might want to consider how that alters behavior in your program. Uh, but otherwise, it's doing the right thing. It's just looping through all of our observers and notifying them. So again, something interesting happened to our subject, and we just want to notify all of our observers. Okay, so that's the idea. Uh, now let's test the rest of our functionality here. Let's go ahead and um, for our subject, let's go ahead and just uh, remove uh, an observer. Uh, and let's go ahead and, um, I don't know, let's remove observer. Uh, let's remove observer three here. And then, um, you know, just to give us a little bit of a, uh, an end line here, so we can see our output a little bit clearer in our experiment, then we'll just go ahead and call subject uh, notify all. So again, you can imagine this in a gaming scenario where some entity was destroyed or is inactive. Um, again, just something doesn't exist anymore, but you still want to uh, notify everything what happened. Let's recompile, rerun, and now you'll just see that observer two and observer one are paying attention to the subject here. Okay, so that's the idea with the observer pattern. Let's go ahead and just quickly do a little uh, code review here, just so you can see everything. Again, we've created our observer class here. This is just sort of the, the basics here. Um, so something that has some data. Um, now, again, the observer, it doesn't have to be a class that you're registering to the subject. It could be a function, but I've just sort of done this as an object-oriented way. We'll see that in the next implementation that I do here, uh, why that might be useful. Uh, 
but again, here's our subject, which registers a particular type of observer, this concrete class here uh, for this demo. And then uh, we showcased how to use it with our subject, uh, registering three observers to it. Uh, and again, we're just adding the raw pointer here, which is fine. And again, you might want to think about who owns or who's going to actually destroy these objects, or, you know, we should probably do some sort of, uh, you know, null check or these types of things as well. But this is a simple enough implementation. And then we practiced using notify all to notify all of our observers. Okay, so that's the basic idea here. So again, just kind of reviewing this design pattern here as I've implemented here, uh, I'll get out of the way, you know, we just saw the code, but thinking about it, you know, there are some trade offs. Uh, again, this isn't a perfect design pattern, uh, but it also matters how I've implemented it. So I will in another video after this, um, kind of address some of these things, but pause and think about some of these things, you know, is this a very flexible code structure? Could I maintain it easy? Is it extensible? Pause and think about these things. And if you've paused and thought a little bit about these, um, well, is it flexible? You know, not really as it stands. I can't create other, you know, I have to do this essentially for all of my data types, which might be fine. So I could probably abstract out or maybe make use of inheritance for some of these uh, things to make them observable or, or subjects. Um, is it maintainable? Maybe, I would argue, I mean, this code itself isn't that um, complex. I think folks could sort of understand it. Um, and then sort of going with the flexibility, it's not really extensible, right? They have these sort of two concrete classes. So I've shown you this example and I'll want to enhance this in a little bit, but that's gonna be coming up in another video. So um, make sure that you uh, keep an eye out for that or subscribe so that you don't miss it otherwise. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that lesson. I hope that gave you sort of the intuition of what Observer is. And if you haven't seen it, um, that's really all it is, just showing off some code here. Uh, again, I think it's worth um, just popping in and scrolling through this really quickly, just so you can see it all in one go here. Here's the Observer, here's the subject, and here's a little test um, uh, for you to see that this is working. And I think folks often could get boggled down and sort of the UML diagrams that you see online, but uh, hopefully this gives you a start to the implementation and then we'll build something a little bit more interesting in the next video. So make sure you don't miss that. I hope this helped you. And if you have other thoughts about the observer and some cool things that you've done or whatever, uh, feel free to engage in the discussion otherwise. And with that said, folks, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Thanks for your time and attention.